show you how to make a rocket stove. With a rocket stove, you'll be able to cook a full meal just with a handful of twigs. Sticks that you can find anywhere, any kind of debris, paper, you name it. If it burns, it can cook your meal. First of all, the most important item is this can right here. It's about a five gallon can. I picked this up at a Japanese food restaurant nearby. The second item you're gonna need is some stove pipe. This is four inch stove pipe. The stove pipe is four inches across. You'll need a straight long piece and an elbow piece. And you will need one tin can. So now let's talk about what tools you need. First of all, most importantly, you're going to need a set of gloves. Some kind of leather glove, something to protect your hands because we're going to be cutting steel. It's very sharp and it's very dangerous. I've cut myself a number of times working with these things. You're going to need a pencil, a knife, a serrated knife. I like the serrated knives that have very tight serrated edges here because they cut through the tin much easier. You're going to need a chisel to start your holes. And one of the most important tools, this is a tin snip or metal cutters. You need a hammer and a brush to clean up with. Before I begin making it, I want to let you know where I found out how to do this. Um, this is Capturing Heat. It's released by Apervecho, Apervecho Research Center. And inside of it, there are plans for a Winarski rocket stove. The first thing you're going to want to do is take your pencil and draw outlines where we're going to make the cuts. Take your elbow and pick a side of the rocket stove that's going to be the front. It doesn't really matter because usually they're all the same size, but you just pick a side and plan out where you're going to cut the hole. You want the hole to be about an inch or so away from the bottom. You don't want it too low or else it'll get the bottom really hot when it cooks. And you don't want it too high because you want the maximum amount of space to go for the chimney. So it doesn't really matter exactly where, but I'm going to pick about an inch from the bottom, maybe about there, just because it fits in with this nice little box here. And I'm going to draw a circle all the way around it. We have a faint circle. You'll need the hammer and chisel to begin the hole. Once a hole is created, you take your tin snips and you get them in there and you start to cut around the line you just made. It's good to actually be on the inside of the circle a little bit so that way it's tight enough to hold the stove pipe. first hole's been cut. The other important thing is that your can needs to have a lid. The lid's actually important to hold the top part of the chimney. One thing you're going to need for this, which I forgot to mention, is a file. Take your file and go along the edges of the can wearing down all the points, sharp edges. So, Take a long piece of stove pipe, get your measuring tape. As you notice, there's two sides, a crimp side and a non-crimp side. From the crimp side, you want to measure four inches. Take your pencil and make a mark. Take something straight and continue that mark all the way around. You can just eye it. it, doesn't have to be exact. 
all the way around the pipe. Open up your pipe and take your tin snips and cut all the way around it. As my wife just mentioned, wear your gloves. helps to lift this side up as you cut it. With your piece cut, snap it all together. Like so. So you have a small round piece. Take your file and go around the edges again. With the edge smooth and safe, you test it to see if it fits inside the hole. Take a little off the edges, so it's too tight. There we go. Fits in rather snug. Perfect. And there you have the opening to the rocket stove. The four inch piece of stove pipe is inserted into the can with the crimped edge towards the inside. The elbow goes over top of it with the crimp side coming up. The next step after you have your elbow in place is you measure out five inches of the long stove pipe to cut. And just like before, when you go around the whole length of stovepipe. Once again, take your tin snips and cut. And once again, wear your gloves. <laughs> Once the piece is cut, you snap it together. Take your file and file the edge. Once this piece is finished, take out your elbow and fit it over top of the crimped edge. With the full stove pipe in place, you can see that it rests about an inch below the top of the can. With this kind of lid that goes over top of it like this, what we're going to have to do is cut the outside edge off. You'll need to take one of your pieces of stovepipe out. In this case, we're going to use the front of the elbow. You lay it down on top of your lid in the center and draw a circle around the edge. In our case, there is already a circle here. Once again, we take our chisel and hammer to start the hole. Once you have a hole, you take your tin snips, put them in and cut around it. Once you cut your hole, make sure it fits over the stovepipe. Like such. Now that you know it fits, take it off, put the stovepipe back in, Now that the rocket stove is basically put together, you have to fill the inside with ashes, which acts as an insulator. It keeps the heat in so it doesn't burn up the can, and it also causes heat to build up inside the stovepipe, which causes the air to rise very quickly 
which is why it's called a rocket stove, because it pulls air through the chamber like a rocket. Take your ashes and pour them in all around the stove pipe on the inside of the can. Now that you have your rocket stove filled with ashes, take the lid that you cut out and put it in over top of it to hold the ashes in. The lid sits on top, holding the ashes in and the heat in. One thing we need now is a small platform, a piece of metal that's going to sit in the middle of this entry here. And that's what your tin can is for. You want to open up both sides. Both sides open, you cut it down the middle. And you open it up. You take a tape measure and measure four inches. You want to leave a little bit on both sides. so that it'll fit in, but it won't go completely through. And what you're doing is you're creating a platform which will hold the sticks over top of an air hole, which will allow air in through the bottom. So you cut it up a bit, and leave basically a little wing on each side. It doesn't have to be too big. And you just cut it off a little bit, maybe about an inch on each side. So it ends up looking something like this. Once you have your piece ready, made from the tin can, you put it in the hole. You need to find yourself a piece of grate, something like this, or a couple strips of metal to sit on top and to hold your pot. Let's fire it up. them in paper bags so they don't blacken everything around them. But I've given up washing them. To light a rocket stove, you need some kind of paper. You need some matches or some way to ignite this. It could be a bow drill. And you need some twigs. Take your paper and you put it in the bottom below the platform we just made. You take your twigs, just little sticks, you find anywhere. And you put them in on the on the top. Well, it's good to have your pot sit aside, not directly over the chimney when you first light it up, so that way it gets a real draft and pulls up. And once it really ignites, once it really starts going, then you move your pot over the flame. Sometimes to get it going, you might want to blow on it a little bit. So there you have a very focused flame, exactly where you want it, right to your pot. Push your pot over the flame. I find that this works better or as good as any household stove. You can actually boil things faster because you get a greater flame. 
And if you forget about it, you forget that you're cooking something, it goes out by itself. Right now the flame's a bit high. You really wouldn't want to burn it this high all the time. It generally doesn't smoke this bad. I'm going to let it burn down a little bit. As the twigs burn down, you just push them in. This is a very efficient cooking method. Whenever you're boiling something, it's very important to use a lid. You'll boil things much faster if you have a lid on your pots. solar cooker that I recently bought from Solar Cookers International online. This is called a Sun Toy. Basically it's a large reflector that concentrates the heat on a black pot. It opens up like this. These clothesline pins hold it together here on the bottom. You put two little blocks, a piece of wood like this, to hold your pot. You need a black pot, something that's thin and light. Cast iron takes a long time to heat up and doesn't work very efficiently. So you take your food, you put it in here, and you take a plastic bag that comes with the kit, or you can pick them up at grocery stores as oven roasting bags. Put your food inside of the pot and inside of the bag. And you set it here. And the bag pulls through one of these tiny holes in the reflector. Put your food in here on a nice sunny day, let it sit for a few hours, it cooks up without any energy at all except for the sun. Not bad. This concludes our first segment of alternative cooking techniques for weblife.org. Hopefully we'll be able to bring you more videos to share the information, teach you what we know, and maybe you can teach us what you know. Take care. Oh my God.